Hey Thunder Nation, welcome back to another edition of a show full of contradictions where viewers like you ask us to tell us everything that's wrong with your guns. One of the requirements of sharing a picture of your gun on the internet is learning everything that's wrong about it and why you're an idiot for owning it. So buckle up cupcakes as we dive into another group of viewer submitted guns that all have some serious flaws in them. Before we get started, I'd love to see all of you masochistic degenerates hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We've been getting a ton of reports that our videos are not showing up to our fans when we launch them. If you take care of these two tiny little things, you're not only going to be aware of every ounce of shade we throw your way, you're also going to be helping the channel grow. Alright, enough of that. Let's get to roasting. This AR is chambered in 50 Beowulf. What's wrong, Pookie? Did they not have 458 SOCOM? I mean, maybe if you got it in that caliber, it'd be cool, but it's tough to say at this point. This rifle would be okay if it didn't blatantly advertise that you can only have what is described as the smallest piece of self-esteem ever. Thought I was going somewhere else with that one, didn't you? A 14 and a half inch barrel with a welded muzzle brake is not tactical because you can't even suppress the thing. Much in the same way you're unable to suppress your desire to impress people by owning things like boats and houses. But you do have a suppressor ready handguard. Yay for that, I guess? The biggest problem with owning this gun is how much you must constantly be getting berated by those airsoft rangers who think that this is going to be the coolest and ultimate boog gun. Meanwhile, you're collecting empties to trade in at the local recycling center so you can afford another box of ammunition someday. Plus, 50 Bayo just jams a lot, so it's hard to even enjoy a full mag dump without looking to see if anybody noticed that third stoppage on this mag of 10 rounds. You're probably really good at clearing malfunctions quietly, so I guess that's a pretty good skill to have. This submission comes from a fan in Sweden. I don't know what their laws are like over there, so this is either an A1 clone or it might have actually seen some service somewhere. That would explain the god-awful eyesore of the buttstock with the numbers painted on. The A1 was introduced in a time when the AR platform just sucked. So I don't even know why you would have any desire to own one of these things. Take everything that differentiates a good AR from a crappy one, then just throw away all the good parts and you have this piece of crap. When soldiers were first issued this thing, they were begging to have their M14s back. <laughs> I mean, can you even imagine begging for an M14? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no modularity on the handguard, no collapsible buttstock, and a leather sling? You are dangerously close to FUD territory, Meatball Wrangler. When I look at this thing, my brain starts to hurt because I can't even figure out where to put the LPVO. Can any of you imagine trying to chamber around without M4 feed ramps? I can't, and I refuse to live in a world where that hardship is required of me. Enjoy your brine fish and quit trying to justify your gun and reminding people that Simo just use iron sights. You aren't the white death. And that dude got shot in the face anyways. You probably think that this gun is cool because it has a dong and a folding stock. Well, that's where you're wrong, bucko. One of the fun things about shooting Romanian AKs is that every single time you shoot it, it rattles in your hand worse than a Spetsnaz trooper who hasn't had a shot of vodka in a few hours. The folding stock might look cool, but it can make a sub 2K feel like a finely engineered Swiss watch when trying to get a decent cheek weld. The sights are not so much sights as they are more crudely fabric cobbled chunks of sheet metal trimmed with shears by Michael J. Fox on a trampoline. The furniture at least looks like it hasn't been handled by too many people, much like another vaguely similar piece of anatomy you might have, sir. At least the magazine wobble on this is probably enough where you can break that mag free if you ever do run out of ammunition and need to do a mag change. The muzzle device on this purest AK is also a perfect example of Soviet engineering. It works not because it's good, but because it's good enough for somebody so expendable that your commander will make you share a rifle with another untrained farmer turned conscript. <sighs> when we asked for some more AK submissions on the last episode, I was hoping for something better than this back alley abortion. God damn it. Somehow you managed to take an IO receiver and make an even shittier gun than IO is capable of making themselves. Actually, you know what, that's kind of more an achievement really than anything else if you think about it. 
The screws holding this piece of crap together are begging to be removed and to be put into something more useful and attractive, like a malfunctioning counterfeit Furby doll. The Krylon Commando here must have learned how to code his weapon from an art teacher in a school for the blind. You somehow managed to keep communism alive and well by attaching a UTG forward grip and a TaxPort scope mount straight from Alibaba.com, so I guess I can give you points for trying to stay true to its original heritage of the design. I'm curious if you can actually see your sights with that scope mount in the way, and would it even matter if you could? Between the epoxy holding the side mounting rail on and that bent barrel, I'm not sure which part is going to cause the next person who tries to fire this poor excuse of a firearm to self-destruct. This must have been an attempt at a budget build, and I don't think you could have done any better at saving money if you just melted down all those monster energy drink cans and forged them into your own Chinesium components. Though those empties are probably worth more at Pookie's recycling plant than this gun is at a sketchy pawn shop. I'm going to have to ask you to turn in your Dremel and your safety squints until you retake the 7th grade metal shop class and hopefully pass this time. This one comes from a Tundra crew member. Looks like we got an operator on our hands, folks. Nothing says I'm tactical AF more than putting rail covers on the top rail because of reasons that don't actually exist. Oh yes, there's that hollow sun red dot optic, the optic for wannabe door kickers all over rural America. Of course, you had to save some of your money to put that can on, but you couldn't have just sprung for the extra MBUS Pro backup sights and the milled receiver set? Get your act together, man. And moreover, get all your gear in matching camo patterns too. ACU pattern was never good, or even cool. You know, the more actually I look at this build, the more I realize that not a single component on here is even mil spec, and that makes me sick. By the way, when are we uh, going to the range again? I kind of want to shoot this. Damn. Okay, okay. You're sitting at the table, but you are not granted the rank of master just yet. We're told that the goal of this build was to create the cheapest AR-15 possible. Mission accomplished. Poverty Pony lower, clearly with a mismatched upper and bargain bin parts. Key mod rails were deemed to be flimsier than that conspiracy that birds aren't real and are actually robotic surveillance devices dispatched by the government. Also, it looks like you tighten your muzzle device on with a monkey wrench. I'm assuming that those backup iron sights are parts you took away from your kid's Lego set. When I asked Eric what he thought of this thing, he just started looking at me. And when I looked back into his eyes, I saw his soul and he appeared to notice something that could have been miles behind me, even though we were in a room with no windows. His skin grew pale and a slight glisten of sweat appeared across his furrowed brow. His grip tightened on his coffee cup and he didn't even seem to notice when the hot liquid started spilling out and burning his white knuckles of his ever tightening grip. As we sat there for a moment that seemed to last for hours and hours, a single tear slipped from his eye and he was only able to mutter two words. It's fine. It's fine. Congratulations on contributing to the Chinese economy by purchasing the cheapest red dot site I have ever had the misfortune of laying my eyes upon. Does that thing even have a red dot, or is it just an etched middle finger to whoever has the misfortune of lifting this up to the high ready position? Smart choice in the backup iron sights. You're gonna need them. What kind of AR is this? Clearly, somebody wants to ruin things by being the biggest troll possible. This is a FUD gun, and was thought to have gone extinct somewhere around the time that Call of Duty stopped making their games about World War II. It's not specified in the description what caliber this one's chambered in, but we can guess it's all probably 30-30. And you'll swear up and down that nobody needs a rifle more powerful than that because you've killed an infinite number of deer with this soy boy rifle, and they all drop dead in their tracks. You probably also think 223 is more powerful than 3030 because an AR has a 30 magazine clip that's capable of killing 15 people every second. Hey, you ever been kissed by that scope, bud? Because if it was mounted any farther back, you might be able to use it to see into a past time when it was a scientific fact that a bayonet lug made a rifle more dangerous than a punji pit filled with hungry rattlesnakes. This is probably the gun that makes you think you're a sniper because you put a scope on it after your grandpappy gave it to you which you mounted in the kitchen and used a couple of matchsticks to shim the scope rings after you drilled and tapped your own scope mount with that clapped out Black & Decker drill you dug out of the garage. I'll tell you what, I'll just see you at the American Legion drinking a PBR while you're trying to convince the live band to play Freebird, even though they're a CCR cover band and closing time was 20 minutes ago. I see what you did here. 
All right, cool. I get it. You thought you could seduce me with a Chris Vector chambered in the best caliber. Nice try, butthole. But it's clear that somebody still tries to go to the office to engage their co-workers in serious discussions about whether Han or Greedo shot first, or whether or not Boba Fett actually died in the Sarlacc pit. This is exactly why you don't have any friends, and paying somebody to paint your gun in a Space Force theme motif is not helping your case. That budget sig Romeo should help offset the ridiculous cost of your overkill cartridge. You know you can actually put holes in a pizza box just as easily with a 9mm, right? The can was probably purchased after he realized that his gun brought enough ridicule to himself at the range, and he's just trying to enjoy his gun without the chads reminding him that it doesn't help hide his neckbeard from milady when he's cruising for chicks on World of Warcraft. At least your waifu pillow never tells you that you need to watch your trench coat, hair, or trilby. Okay, I almost don't want to do this one because it's only partly his fault for living in California. Unfortunately, I am bound by an oath that took place once in the parking lot of a 7-Eleven right after a late night of testing the limits of the human body to consume an entire bloomin' onion by adding enough alcohol to my digestive system when a little man wearing a shiny green suit with pointy ears and teeth offered me internet fame if I was willing to trade away my dignity and sense of self-worth. Lucky for me, I've never been flush with either. And honestly, I feel like I came out on top of that situation. First off, the shark fin looks ridiculous, and I hate it. Now I have a question. You put that ridiculous safety selector switch on, which was meant to improve the ergonomics of a rifle that has origins in a country that doesn't even have a word for ergonomics in their primary spoken language? That's clearly a fact that was just made up because nobody on the Tundra team knows how to speak Russian. The shorty make is a disgrace to a firearm that was specifically engineered to achieve accuracy by way of volume of fire. Surefire is a cool light, but you couldn't spring for the few extra bucks for the remote switch? Come on, bud. This thing is supposed to be tactical, right? The optic fits and is arguably a good choice, but then you had to go and ruin everything by mounting a bayonet to it like a total weeb. I have it on good authority that the army doesn't even teach bayonet fighting in basic training anymore, so it's clearly not a viable option for anything but announcing that you have 43 grunt style shirts strewn across your bedroom floor that your mom is too scared to clean up because some of them are nearing the point where they're going to need child support. Also, it's from Arsenal, and for some reason the internet community has recently decided that I guess we're supposed to hate them now? At least you'll have a fighting chance when the Alphabet Boys come for you, as they will be way too busy laughing at your shitty rifle to get the zip cuffs over your pizza roll stained wrists. Well, that about wraps up the episode, guys. If you dislike the video, then you should probably upgrade your Romeo 5 to an aim point. But if you like the video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon page to stay up to date on current and future content. And if you feel like repping some Tundra swag, follow the link in the description below to our new store on Teespring. Thanks for watching, Tundra Nation, and you can now find us on Instagram at TundraTacticalMN.